Hello and welcome to another Out of Spec Reviews video. Behind me is the Rivian R1S. Yes, we have this truck, thanks to Rivian, for about a week to do all of the testing and everything with. It's especially exciting because you actually want one of these. Yes, I do. And I want one even more now. Really? I'm so i some time with it. Oh, I've already folded down the seats to see if there's enough space for the dogs. And I've so already tested it. what we're going to do in this video is very similar to when we first reviewed the Rivian R1T, which is I went on to rivianforums.com and rivianstories.com, wonderful Rivian communities out there. And I said, hey, we have one of these. You know, we do all the nerdy EV testing what are you interested in seeing and so we're at least going to try and let you know everything we're going to do with this truck over the next week or so and answer your questions i've also pulled around a rivian r1t launch edition behind the r1s launch edition that we're reviewing because a lot of the questions have to do with comparisons between the two so we've already found so many little differences between both and uh, can't wait to share our plans over the next week with the r1s I want to say a huge thank you to Sparrow World for sponsoring today's video. Hey, these guys are doing something pretty incredible. They are supporting our forgotten Afghan allies through this wonderful charity, which you can find on freedomraffle.org. All you have to do is purchase a $150 ticket and you're immediately entered to win a Tesla Model S Plaid. Guess what? Sparrow World already has the Plaid, so as soon as you win the raffle, it shouldn't take long for you to get the car. On top of that, you have the best chances ever that I've seen of winning one of these cars in the raffles that we've done here. And that's because Sparrow World has only sold about 20% of their tickets coming up to their deadline. So all you have to do is head to freedomraffle.org to support our forgotten Afghan allies by purchasing some tickets. And of course you're entered to win that awesome Model S Plaid. Best of luck and thank you to Sparrow Worldwide for sponsoring today's video. This is the Rivian R1S media vehicle that Rivian has kindly loaned to us for about a week. And what do you think of the spec, Alyssa? This blue with the black interior. Not a fan of the blue, but that's completely okay. I'm more a fan of that limestone over there. Um, Very nice. Definitely the color, but also I'm a fan of the red as well. Cause we saw when we were at, we were in Illinois picking up the truck, there was uh, one of these in red and we were like, that actually surprised me. Yeah, looks Red really Canyon good. on black 22s. Yeah. I think the R1S actually looks really good on the sport wheels and tires. Here it is right over here. Um, and to me, there's something cool about a street spec R1S. I actually really love a murdered out, blacked out R1S. You get the black 22s, dark tints. I know, but we have so many black cars. Right. Well, we're not <laughs> going to. All gonna, of our cars are black right now. Maybe we'll, hates us. <laughs> right. Well, maybe we'll finalize the series with how you'll spec your R1S, yep. which is your next vehicle. Um, you own an Audi e-tron right now. Yep. And, you know, it's going to be a couple of years, I think, till we get our R1S. But it's cool that we get a little preview with it ahead of time. So mm -hmm. if anyone's in the Colorado area, by the way, we're going to a Rivian meetup in Fort Collins this coming Saturday. So I'll leave the link uh, in the description to that event, but you're more than welcome. We'll bring this over. You can go out and it. I'll take you for a ride. If you want to see the R1S, it'll be kind of fun. Um, so let me tell you about the spec and I guess what we're planning on doing with it. And then we'll get into viewer questions. Does that mm -hmm. sound good? So I've raised the suspension all the way up on this one. This is in highest suspension. And I just want to say right off the bat, I'm noticing a lot more positive camber here than R1T. It also looks to be significantly taller than R1T yeah. and more than I remember our truck going. Now it could be down to the R1T we're comparing it to over here is on the 22 inch sport wheels and tires, which I believe actually has a one inch less overall diameter to it. That's just our prediction. But either way, this thing out on the trail, the R1S is going to be a monster. I think it's 12 or 14 inch shorter wheelbase. We'll get all these specific numbers when we get into the videos, but a significant reduction in length here, wheelbase. And to me, it's just going to be, I think, very cool out on the trail to see how much more nimble it is. Now, we've, we've done quite a bit of off-roading in our R1T mm -hmm. and um, we're pretty familiar with it. We've watched how Rivian's tuned the drivetrain over the years. 
or years over the months and it's yeah. gotten <laughs> so much better in my opinion what i really love about rivian is they seem to be very responsive to user feedback so especially when we had our review truck earlier this year we mentioned a lot of things that we found and those have pretty much all been improved upon and fixed in over the air updates so and dog mode has come in wink wink that's probably the best thing that they've done yeah what do they actually call it though it's not pet, dog, mode, pet, pet mode is it pet mode yeah. yeah pet safe i forget exactly what it is know. something like that pet something we yeah. can check we can check check in there so let me tell you about the wheels and tires we have the 21 20 inch all terrains here this is uh the non-standard design so if you take a look at the uh, limestone r1s in the back over there and, and the r1t you'll see those have the standard 20 inch all terrains this is the one visual difference personally not a fan of these wheels. I think they look better in black like we have them here, um, but I do really don't like the dual tone ones. What do you think? Uh, I don't really have much of an opinion on wheels. Okay. They For don't me, really make a difference to stylistically, me. stylistically, not my choice, but right. that's okay. What we really care about is these tires. Now, right. you guys know in terms of specs, about 135 kilowatt hour battery pack. It should be the same battery that's in our R1T. Of course, I'm gonna charge it. I'm going to do everything with it. This one's going to have the newest software update it, on it. Rivian's gonna send the dot .39 update to it. Uh, right now it's on dot .35, which is what our personal truck is on, but we're gonna get dot .39, which should have some improvements, um, some cool things coming in that. Uh, such as kneel mode and some other things. So we'll, we'll do a whole video on that. 135-ish um, kilowatt hour battery pack. We can pull 125 out of it on our truck is what we've done in the 70 mile an hour test. Four motors on this one. These are the Bosch source, sourced motors, 800 and something horsepower, crazy fast. The motors sound incredible. And so really looking forward to seeing how this performs. I think it's no secret. We're gonna do a bit of a performance comparison because in my opinion, the cool thing about the Rivian is at least from our truck, and we've put almost 20,000 miles on them now. Uh, I've done more than 20,000 miles in Rivians in total because I've driven friends' trucks and the review truck. Uh, you get a sports car. I mean, it's a very heavy one, but it can do some incredible things for how it's designed. Yeah, you get a lot out of one truck. Yeah, you get an so. off-roader, you get a tow rig, mm -hmm. and you get a comfortable daily driver. Right. A lot of people ask, like, what's the one car to spend the money on? If you only have, if you live in an urban environment or you just want to have just one car, it's Rivian R1T can just, the spider web of what it can do is insane. Yeah, it really is, it's impressive. And so this should be even better in the off-road categories, even better in the family categories, three row. So I'm obviously, look, I, there's already things that I'm not totally in love with here, but, and I'll share those. This isn't all intended to be a very positive review. I wanna share, you know, our true impressions of the truck and everything and, and of this SUV. Um, but uh, overall, I mean, it, objectively, this thing just rocks. Yeah, I don't think there's there's much like it on the market. And I think that's what makes it super special and super unique and super likable. So. Yeah, and I think we'll compare it to other electric SUVs on the market. We'll also compare it to combustion SUVs. For example, a saying that I've had for a little while is the R1S is going to be the new Range Rover. The new Rover. Yeah, and so, no, you know, we have a Range Rover, an older one, but, um, you know, I thought it'd be kind of cool to talk about those things. So, big differences with the R1S versus the T is come around back here. You get this sort of design to make it into an SUV. Now, personally, I think this is pretty ugly. Yeah. You agree? Yeah, I don't like how boxy it See, is. I like how boxy it is, yeah. but something about what's going on back here, maybe if you black out this chrome piece would help a little bit. Possibly. It definitely looks better in person than it does in photos. Yeah. There is something I'm not loving about the this area of R1S visually but it's minor nitpicks. I'm not yeah. really a styling guy, right? Yeah, I really get into it here. Yeah, but if you look at the truck from, from straight back, so if you come from my point of view here, you'll just see how chunky this thing looks, especially when you slam it out and air this thing out to lay, lay frame, lay battery, put it in lowest suspension. These wheels have a bit more poke than the R1S, so, or excuse me, the R1T. So it's got some girth to it in the back. Definitely does. Alyssa, you wanna show everyone how the rear situation works? Yeah. So there's a singular button underneath, right? Yep. Power open. And then this is Quiet manual. motors. This is manual, which yeah. I think is already a negative, to mm -hmm. be honest. Um, if you look at X5, if you look at new Range Rover vehicles right. that have this clamshell design, uh, those are powered. And it means you can do a one-touch power close. But right. here, try and hit the power button with the tailgate open. Let's see what happens. 
it flashes, yeah. but nothing happens here. So definitely a little, I mean, doesn't really bother me too much. It's not a make or break, but what, oh, yeah. what kind of is upsetting is it doesn't have um, a tilt a manual or a, what do you call it? Oh, you mean to dump the rear air suspension yeah, out? Yeah. So again, in X5, in XC90, in Range Rover, in other vehicles, mm -hmm. there's usually a little button inside to control the rear air suspension, and it allows it to basically air out the rear of the vehicle. So if you're trying to lift something heavy in it, if we're trying to put Ellie, our golden retriever, <laughs> in the back who will, is refusing to jump, even yeah. though she's capable, yeah. you know, we could air the, the rear out, basically do a Carolina squat, mm -hmm. and then get some stuff in. So no yeah. setting here. But... Uh, there is auto kneel function, which is coming in, I believe, the dot thirty nine update. But is that going to kneel forwards or backwards? It's going to kneel the whole thing down. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. just going to air out, go to lowest. Is my understanding. We'll test it out. And we'll let you know, of course. It'd be good to have that feature to be able to do that on the app. So if I'm coming in and I have the dogs, or I have groceries or something, and I'm mm -hmm. my hands are full. I can already do that before having to go into the car to do it. So let's visualize that situation. Yeah. You're coming out of Costco, your hands are full. Oh, yeah, Let Costco. me reach for my phone and get the app out to lower the truck. What are you thinking? Well, to do it beforehand. I mean, oh, it's either I'm going to okay. have stuff in my I hands see what you're saying. and then I'm going to have to lift it up and then. Okay. But I can, if, if I can't, but I usually don't think about but it. But then, before, you know, but. maybe it's not the safest thing because what if something runs underneath your truck? You wouldn't want to air it out without having visual contact with it. What's gonna run underneath my A truck? cat, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> a, a lot this of, a this lot needs of some baking in. All right, so here, let's just take a look at what we have going on yeah. back here. Third row is currently down. We've upped this shelf, if you take a look in here, to make it somewhat flat, so there's no big divot. We are gonna do a whole camping video in this where we're gonna sleep in it, uh, or someone is, I don't think I will be, but Max might do that. Um, I think we're gonna take this in our R1T camping. I'll stay in the T, someone will stay in this. But if we lower this down, like Alyssa's done here, you'll see there's a quite a big ridge hmm. right here. And so that's, um, you know, probably not great, but you'll see there's this little design. That's very can... neat that they thought about that. Yeah, yeah. That's very well thought And then out. this goes right into place and then you're good to go. Um, just speaking on in the back, because this is where most of the changes are to R1S versus T is all in the rear of the truck. B pillar forwards, it's the same pretty much. These rails are pretty neat, really girthy rails. I really like these things. They feel like you can hold quite a bit. Alyssa, you're the dog person. Do you worry about Ellie's paws slipping into this? Uh, definitely if you have a smaller dog, I would worry about it. And then also getting their nails stuck would be, yeah, would be something I'd be concerned about. But would I be majorly concerned? No, again, that's just pretty much a nitpick. I mean, I think there's going to be probably a slide in insert. Yeah. Uh, maybe not from Rivian, but maybe someone in the community will generate that where you Create can something like a little that. rubber insert just to fill that gap. Yeah. Well, can you take these things out? Yep, absolutely. Okay. You just slide them up to here and okay. then they pop out. Oh, okay. And then you can see they. So, yeah, just a, a rubber rubber insert would be fine to have that because, I mean, I doubt you're really going to be strapping things down back here. I mean, I'd strap down crates back here. So yeah, but. dog crates. We're going to do a whole dog episode. You mm -hmm. did that with the R1T, and remember you said it wasn't so dog friendly. Mm -hmm. We also just took both of our dogs in our R1T on right. a you know three and or four I day road trip. And I see one thing that I absolutely love. Oh, what is it? Rear air vents on the side pillars. Wow. Makes a world's difference with dogs and kids, of course. But yeah, um, Mostly dogs. Who cares mostly, about the kids? <laughs> um, we care about the kids, too. Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll definitely do some case comparisons on this as well. Yeah, to car seats. People. Yeah, we've, we've got some, we have some friends with some babies that we can, we can shove in here and do a good yeah. comparison. Yeah, we can put Eva in the back and yeah. take her for a ride. There's <laughs> also still an onboard air compressor right in here. So I can open this very similar to R1T. So you can set your pressures and go again. It's not really a calibrated scale. Maybe we should see if this one's more accurate than R1T. Our R1T fluctuates a couple PSI at the end. So I always recommend double checking your pressures when using but that. How worried are we that these are going to break? I mean, this is just, you mean that plastic uh, thing? Yeah. I would honestly want that gone. I don't even want it covered. So show yeah. everyone what's behind there, Alyssa. So what's behind here is, oh, a normal outlet and a cigarette outlet and then your buttons to be able to fold these down. So should we raise those up so we can show everyone how the buttons work? Sure. Yeah, let's do that. So this one down. I've never done this. This is my first time. Latch up. Okay, so I just figured that was my first time genuinely. So hit it's that rear seat button and see. Oh, that's this one. It did that one? 
Oh. So that's second row folding. And then these are... Those are manual folding with that latch. Ah, makes sense. Okay. So, okay, now you got a full flat surface. I've noticed this carpet is starting to, to pick up here a little bit, and it could just be that someone had something sitting here and mm -hmm. left an impression, but um, definitely noticing this is gonna catch on whatever you put in here. This and is ample amount of room. This is huge back yeah, here. This is massive. It's way okay. bigger than our e-tron and way and sturdier. Um, ports USB C well. ports yeah, right so you there. Can charge things. We're Kids gonna be can stuff all their snacks and chewed apples in there. <laughs> chewed apples. All the hidden it's things. It's gonna be McDonald's are, French fries. Are gonna be in there is gonna be nasty. So moms, <laughs> watch out for that one. Yeah, um, we're also gonna do uh, power output testing on every USB port to see how much power we can pull out of them. But that's kind of a nice action that it slides down it's almost magnetic i think it is magnetic actually everything feels hardy you have cup holders back here for the third row um before we do the third row test Alyssa, is there anything left in the back we should discuss i think lighting's important lighting so you have important, and it also there's a third row glass above. right that's really nice so super nice. i i just think the lighting back here is incredible because mm -hmm. if, if you take a look you have two down lights here which is really nice um, so you can see everything you're working with you have, of course, right after the C-pillar in the roof, but even outside of the vehicle, if you're trying to cook, you know, let's say you have an aftermarket pullout situation, you have these LEDs that shine down and they're designed to spread in a wide pattern. So that's cool really nice. One thing that, you know, I've always said F-150 Lightning does better than the R1T is that surround lighting situation. Oh yeah, that's cool. It's really cool. And we've mm -hmm. been, you know, we tow a lot with our truck. We work with it at night, of course, mm -hmm. uh, and it's hard to see around it. And I, I always wish Rivian added more lights to T. Doesn't camp mode kind of fix that now? Camp mode does a little bit to the sides, but yeah. it's still front and rear. I wish there was a way to leave fogs and the rear reverse lights on as part of camp mode. Um, but here, this will really help in the rear mm -hmm. seeing things. So yeah. huge fan of everything back here. Um, you know, I mentioned this not being power. That's more of a competitive set feature that I wish it had. It's so easy to close. Not okay. a big deal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Unlike the Rivian R1T's tailgate on the truck. Well, that's just so heavy. That's so that's heavy. That's super heavy. Yeah, that should be powered because like a mid-spec F-150 is. Then again, that's just something else to break in the end. So. Certainly, it adds that complication. Idea. Yeah. Do you want to show closing the tailgate now? Nice, quiet motors, can't hear a thing. Mm -hmm. A little rattle when it catches. A little bit. I think that could be improved upon, but we'll see how it does over time. Um, another thing is you have parking sensors in this plastic panel back here, so quite high sensors. And then the rear uh, trailer uh, cover is actually in black plastic versus this material like R1T. So um, everyone's gonna be curious. Yes, we're gonna be towing efficiency tests. We're gonna max out the tow capacity of this and see how it tows versus R1T with the same load. I think only seven or 8,000 pounds on R1S, forgive me for not having all the specs, but that can tow 11,000. So a huge difference in max towing capability. I wonder why. Yeah, and I gotta do something with the shorter wheelbase and uh, yeah, not, not totally sure, but I will say the R1T tows like a dream. Just one of the best towing experiences I think ever. We've done pretty much the most towing as anybody, except for the all electric family. I think they've done the most towing. Yeah, if you're curious definitely... about towing campers, check mm -hmm. out the all electric family on YouTube. They're they have an awesome. R1T and a Lightning and mm -hmm. they're good friends of ours. They're awesome people. Highly recommend looking at their videos for towing. So Alyssa, why don't you climb into the third row back here? By the way, this rear door, so much larger than R1T. I opened this thing, I was like, whoa, limo door. Um, it's not huge, but it just compared to R1T as a small back seat, this is, this is quite large here. But everything feels nicely put together and built. The materials are quite nice. So Alyssa, are you showing us how to get in the third row there? Mm -hmm. So show us how to do that, put the seat back and Let's see that action again. So you just press this button and it pushes forward. So it tilts and slides. You know mm -hmm. what's kind of not great about that situation though, is if you have a car seat in the second row, because then okay. you would have to remove the car seat for that angle to go. And we just were at our- uh, I don't one... think many parents put car seats in second rows, do they? Comment it... down below, we have no clue. What? Where else would you put a car seat? In the first row. 
So you want access to the littler ones. In the front seat? In here. That's the second row, love. Oh, I thought you were talking about the third row. <laughs> It's my brain. It's like, where else would you put your children? Um, no, so here, if you just step to the side a little bit, let me just show the camera what I'm talking about. I know you're ready to jump in, but I think this is a really important point. By the way, uh, you can stop this from sliding at any point. This seat actuation latches in, actually, you'll see that. But what you can do is you can slide it all the way to the pack. Huge range of motion here. And then locking the seat in by doing the recline is what locks it to the bottom rail. There's also this little latch down here that I can lift on, nice chunky latch, and you can do a pretty deep recline here. Very nice looking second row seats. The one downside is if we look at some GM vehicles and others, I was recently at Magna Seating Laboratory uh, and Magna is one of our sponsors. And this was just a few weeks ago. They were talking about how they have the seats that lift up and tilt forwards without changing this angle so that car seats don't have to be removed to get into the third row. So that's why you're kind of fix it. You had a little bit of something in the back of your brain about thinking about that. So I don't know where else you'd think about car seats. I would never, I have no car seat experience, <laughs> but no. I need to, as a car reviewer, I probably should have more yeah. and we need to talk about it more. So, okay, that's the one downside I'm finding right there. Jump in the third row, Alyssa, let's see your review of it. We'll, well do I more third row. I definitely suggest that this not be high up and slammed because I'm almost six foot and this is. <laughs> you don't like it jacked up? Kind of hard. <laughs> yeah, but you could always lower it. So let's get on in there. And so again, you can choose the position as to where you want that seat to come back. Right. I mean, I have about a good five inches of room. Right, but think... I'm just trying to think. Let me jump in the second row really quick. If okay. we're talking about knee room, let me put this seat where I would want it to go, okay? I'm a little bit bigger, so there's a little grab bar in the center. Right. So for me, this is probably the most forward I would go, uh -huh. and then I would do a small recline. Okay. So I'd be fine sitting like this all day. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. You got room? Yeah, I have room, so what's kind of important, if you go ahead and slide, you get out of here. Actually, let's go in from the other side. We can see you better. Oh, okay. I'll grab the door. Thanks, Max, for filming. <laughs> here we go. I love the door handles. You can just slide in and grab them. They're awesome. So I can kind of, I'll grab the phone to show them. So right where my feet are. Wonderful camera work there. <laughs> there's actually a ton of room down here. So I'm able to slip my feet under. And so there actually is a lot more room to be able to sit back here. Oh, and very like nice. I said, I'm, I'm very tall. So if I can fit, a lot of kids can fit. Now, how about the access to that USB port there Neat. and everything? So. Yeah. yeah, that's easy enough to get to. Easy enough. Very cool. Well, that looks good. So two people easily can fit in that third row. Mm -hmm. Are the seatbelts leaving any impression on the leather here at all? They are. They are. Yep, that's a bit annoying. Now, they do fold down, which is great. Um, this is, I guess, just a pet peeve of mine is leaving impressions. This isn't actual leather. It's some vegan material, and it's holding up really well in our truck. So mm -hmm. very impressed with the material selection on the inside. I've also noticed that the... Rear seats are quite a flat design in the back. There's not and much bolstering. Also, I don't, I've never been a rear seat person, but they actually have a little space right here. Seat belt extension. Can, no, you can slip it into so you don't lose it all the way back there mm -hmm. for kids to be able to get to. Very nice. I think that's the purpose. And the rear air vent looks like it would hit you pretty comfortably. Oh yeah, it's actually angled more on the side here. So it, it does, yeah. Okay, wonderful. But so it looking... does not move up and down. Oh, really? No. Not at all? Not at all. Oh, so it's just it's fixed. left and right. So yeah. can you shut the vent off? Negative. Ah, how about this side? Make sure it's maybe not just that one vent. Nope. Ah, so the vents are always on then. Vents are always on. And we'll have to take a look in the settings. Maybe that's an electronic control to turn on and yeah, off. Yeah, I'm sure you're able to turn it on and off. But... Right. We'll dig into that when we do some more stuff. But why don't you hop out, show us how that action works. So that just automatically spring-loaded, slides forward, and then out she goes. Pretty easy. Very easy. Easier than most third rows. Yeah, I would say I'm impressed. The only thing I wish, again, Rivian would improve upon would be this folding. I'm These also are noticing. Chunky. Yeah, pretty oh chunky goodness. seats, but but looks really nice. I do love the seats in this thing. One of my favorite things that I do I use in my truck all the time are these USB C ports behind the second row. I know we always just kind of forget about them. No, I use them. Well, now we stuck something in there, yes. so it's like forever in there and <laughs> yes. it's not coming out. Yes. 
but it's yeah. really been a wonderful thing. These seat pockets are okay, except I noticed with my laptop, this scratches them. Oh. Yeah, so very neat. Let me hand the camera back to Max now. Thank you, sir. So that's most of the changes back here. I'm also noticing there is child lock and things in the door. In the settings, you can also shut off the rear window uh, controls. How far does the rear window go down? Yeah, I was gonna say, how far does the rear window go down? It goes all the way down. Almost, almost. almost. Yeah, it's got Here, a little, let's close this really quick. It's got a little bit of a lip. It's actually on a, like a diagonal. Yeah, a tiny lip right there, but I think this passes. Yeah. That passes, especially where your elbow's gonna be back here. I wish right. they got another half inch so there was no glass back here, but. Yeah, good. Yeah. <laughs> It's a pass. <laughs> Just so everybody knows. <laughs> Something that's very useful about Rivian's, this is no different than R1T, is the flashlight. It is one of the brightest flashlights ever. It, it, it completes the 7,777 cells in the truck because mm -hmm. this is the, the seventh one versus <laughs> six in the, in the pack. I love that. And I will say like a weird thing that I've found really helpful is the fact that you can actually pull these out when you're putting stuff in because I know when you're in the R1T at least this kind of goes up against your leg a little bit too much yeah so in order to get room to be able to stick stuff in there it's nice that you're able to kind of pull this out to get more room to put something in there totally agree mm -hmm. and so really the front seats are no different the um, you know really only difference is if you look if you're looking head-on and if you want to know if it's an R1T or R1S you can take a look at this sort of brushed aluminum styled uh you know belt line right up here that's to indicate it's an r1s if we come over here to this r1t you'll see it's just windshield meets roof yep. also body color roof here r1s is black roof only it has a sort of floating design i think what maybe why this looks a little bit odd to me is that the c pillar is body color and the d pillar is black maybe, maybe if this was just all black i would like it more I don't know. There is something about this edge. Well, yeah, I guess it goes like black, blue to black. Yeah, I don't know, but I can get over that. I mean, the, the thing <laughs> is just seemingly really spec nicely. Yeah. So what we want to do now is I want to just hear your final thoughts, your initial impressions on the truck and then, or I should say the SUV, and then we're gonna rip out the laptop and run through viewer questions and requests. We'll let you know what videos we plan to make. We'll let you know if we need any help filming videos. There's a whole great community of Rivian owners here in Colorado. We might need a specific truck configuration mm -hmm. for wheel and tire testing, things like that. Um, but overall, our whole goal for this week is to really dig into this vehicle, evaluate it as thoroughly as we can, answer all the nerdy questions and especially get into just how practical it is as a family car absolutely I think that's really important i think that's what they're really going for with this is the ultimate adventure car that you can take your family 100 percent. So. so your impressions as someone who has one on pre-order i i still like it a lot i love the amount of room in it that's in it it's absolutely amazing i like that the third row is actually comfortable for somebody who's six foot like me and I don't know, I don't have much gripe. I mean, it just doesn't have massaging seats, so. Yeah, massaging seats <laughs> would be pretty great. Yes. So Max and I are gonna rip out the computer, go through viewer questions, and uh, then it'll be another hour long video from out of spec. That's just how That'll we roll. That'll be it. <laughs> and now you get to our viewer questions uh, segment of this video where you know, we're huge fans of rivianforums.com, huge fans of Rivian Stories. I've been lucky enough to join their podcast a few times. I love the guys over there. Uh, and I posted a few days ago, like, hey, we're getting an R1S. What do you want us to see, basically? Or what do you want to see? And so we're going to run through your questions. Some of them might be duplicates. We did this with R1T right here in the bed of it last time with our review truck. I figured only fitting to do it here. And then Max is going to run between these two to kind of show you the differences. Get the Apple Watch Ultra. I'm already. <laughs> Put it to workout mode. <laughs> so, oh, we're rocking the same band even. Wow. The green, yeah. Uh, the out of spec approved band. So let's see what we got going on. Uh, John asked, which wheels interested in your standard highway test if there's time? Well, if you see, we have the 20-inch um, all-terrain wheel option on there. It's not the standard design. It's the black ones. And um, we will do a range test, but I'm actually thinking about taking a set of 21-inch wheels um, and throwing it on there. The nice thing is we have enough friends that own Rivians in the area that I'm like, can we swap some wheels on and off your truck? And everyone's kind of said yes. So I think we've sourced ourselves a set of 20s, 21s, and 22s to do all that stuff. So yes. 
Uh, let's see, Alex asked, hey, I'd love to see a dog focused video again. Love to see different ways to move larger dogs in the R1S and what is the preferred way to get them in and out and secured safely. And I think that is a plan. We're definitely going to do that. Um, Alyssa does uh, these really full in-depth videos, even testing out some of the pet comfort. That's the name of it, pet comforts, uh, you know, sort of uh, situation. So you'll see a full dedicated video with probably four or even five dogs in the back of the R1S. It's gonna be pretty crazy. Um, someone says, Eric says, I'd love to see a real bed and sleeping setup in the R1S that is flat level with no bumps or humps. Uh, he really wants to level out the three rows of seats with a decked drawer system, uh, very interesting, and then put a mattress on top of them. He hopes there's enough headroom. So I think we can definitely talk about potential modification things, but Max, would you mind running over to the R1S, laying down and seeing if there's enough room? Yeah, keep in mind, so I'm 6'2", so I'm on the taller side of things here. And I think a lot of, a lot of people are uh, tall in general. Did the truck lock? No. Nope. So here we can observe power, lift gate, manual lower level on the clamshell. Wow, those fold easy. And how about lowering that second row as well? We, uh, we could have done that from here, but there's also buttons on those well, seats. Well, the ones on the sides don't let them fold flat. They just push forward. Yeah, so let me pull this back actually and lock it in. Now hit the button. There we go. There we go. So. Pretty comfortable, even with the lift gate closed, I think I'd have room here. Yeah, so let's do that actually. So there's the lift gate closed. So I think you could lay flat. Are you noticing any weird humps or areas that would be uncomfortable? Uh, kind of this area here. I think if you had a standard camping sleeping pad, that would alleviate any of those issues. Now, if you are on the taller side or around that height range, you're probably gonna wanna set up your pillow, some kind of lining here. Okay, makes sense, but you'd probably have to be really tall for something like that, because it seems like you could keep it right on the seat area. I'm pretty comfortable here, but yeah, clearance to go. Wow, awesome, cool. Well, run back over to the R1T, and we will answer some more questions. So we have um, perhaps the mileage and efficiency loss with 21-inch wheels with aerodynamic covers removed. Um, is there a truck on street tires here? There's one right over here. Uh, if you take a look at this forest green truck, you'll notice that it, it's on the 21 inch road wheels and the little gray inserts inside of the, I would say polished aluminum uh, uh, wheel structure, those pop out. And I do want to do a video talking about the efficiency lofts with those inserted and removed. We can honestly do that T or S, so we may not clog up our week with that. It's a video we're going to make though, for sure. Um, because I think it's pretty interesting. Do we have snow currently? Curious about winter performance. Huh, yes. Uh, not here in Denver, but up in the mountains have gotten snow, spe specifically on the western slope has snow right now. So I think this truck needs to see snow. In the high countries, they have snow. But yeah. I don't know if it sticks yet. Right, we, we are going to try and hit snow with this truck best we can before it goes back. Um, can the R1S be driven with the tailgate closed and the lift gate open and vice versa? No. Well, let's, let's just answer that right now. Let's see if it goes into, into gear. So Max, let me hand you the keys to it. Sure. Here you go. And just try driving it once we have that Well, open. so I think we'll try moving it. I'm gonna open this. So jump in, put it in gear and see if you can move it and what warnings you get like this. So let's come over to the, the driver's side here and let's see what it says. So right. foot on the brake, into drive, and it says show and tell lights turned off, that's fine. We had it on for the video. Does Lift it let you gate move? open, there's a warning here. Yep. It says pull over safely and close it, but if I ignore it, let's see what happens. Yeah. Go for it. So yeah. I can move. Okay, great. So hold that just for one second. I'm gonna lower this now. Okay, now, now throw it in gear. No different warning, nothing else came up. I'm throwing in gear. It still tells me lift gate open, but it's actually now showing that both are open. So it does have sensors to see the bottom one. I can drive it. Yep, still, still can move. Okay, and hold it there, Max. I'm just gonna close. Now the auto function, it will not do anything like we showed earlier. So I'm just gonna pull this down. So this is like if you have some wood panels, honestly, this gap, come in over here, Alyssa, this gap is really thin. There's not much you could really squeeze in there. It's like a little bit more than your hand. Yeah. All right, Max, 
All right. If you look here really quickly, though, the graphic is inaccurate. So it's still showing it like the upper part of that lift gate's open. It's not. So it only seems to kind of be a binary. Oh, I it's open or not. it's not completely latched. It is not because, latched. I can yeah. just lift up on it anytime. Okay. And so the latching function is actually into that lower piece of the tailgate. So even though it looks closed, you can actually see it lifts up a little bit. But Max, it should let you drive like this, I imagine. We just did the same thing before. Yep. And yeah, we're good. Cool. Well, that was an interesting test. And I think this is probably the most interesting bit of all of it. The one thing to be careful of is if you look right here, that's your rear camera right in the bottom of this. I have this it gate. showing you right now. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and you can see here, if you close this on some wood or something, that's going to put all the stress on that camera. So just be really mindful of that. You don't want to be ripping those things off. So good. Back to the computer. Let's take a look at the next thing we want to explore. Let's see, any difference in audio quality given the larger cabin size compared to the truck? Yes, I think we'll mention that in a video coming up. I'm sure the acoustics change. A towing comparison of the R1S and R1T would be great. We plan on towing our trailer and would like to know if efficiency is different from the T, if at all. My guess is it should be even more efficient than the truck towing because you have that extra roof line pushing air out of the way. So we'll definitely see about that. Uh, seems like a lot of Rivian owners are getting rooftop tents. The efficiency doesn't seem to be too impacted on the truck. If the tent's mounted on the bed, I'd like to see the range impact to an R1S with a tent mounted to the roof. That would be a good video. And I'm also curious, do the R1T crossbars fit onto the S? I think they do move a little bit, but that would be it, that we should do that testing. So good idea. I like it. Please put two forward facing car seats in the second row and show us the best way for kids to get into the third row. This is what I was talking about, the seat folding forward situation. We're going to show that it may or may not turn out to be an issue. There might be a way to actually slide the seat forward enough without changing the angle, but we'll get into it. Um, some Chase says he'd like to see those movable rear cargo attachment points actually in use with tie down straps and securing off road gearboxes and be awesome to see how it is in the real world securing a full spare tire with the second row seats up. Hmm. Um, yeah, okay, so interesting. Yeah, there is no, yeah, there's no full size spare option in R1S. Should we show the donut spare? Max, would you mind showing everyone that? Yep. So this is the spare you do get. It's not that full-size wheel, it's just a donut, uh, ready to be inflated, of course, by our onboard compressor, which is nice to see. All right, looking good. We have some more questions. I figured since we're here with the vehicle, we, we should do this here. Um, someone wants to know if we can do a, a whole fit and finish and paint evaluation video like we've done with Model S, Lucid Air, and our R1T. Yes, subscribe if you would like to our out of spec detailing channel. Our friend and colleague Colton runs that channel and he's gonna be basically going and analyzing every millimeter of this truck to get a sense of build quality. Uh, he's also had a whole bunch of R1T's viewers uh, send their trucks from all over the country to him for new car prep. And so uh, he's just been flooded with Rivians. It's been wonderful. So he has a lot of experience with these and he's gonna go through interior fit and finish, how to get the dog hair out. We're gonna try and get this thing really dirty and then Colton's gonna find all the spots like that'll be hard or easy to clean out um, and let you know what attachments you need for vacuum cleaners and stuff like that. So stay tuned. Uh, someone wants us to have a fully loaded R1T um, versus R1S in terms of practical items. So we like take, we like, let's say we max out the load carrying capacity of R1T and see if it can all fit in here. This is crazy Tesla. Oh my God, Drew from Martian Wheels coming. The next question I have is when will we see Martian Wheels for Rivians <laughs> towing his dirt bike? <laughs> That's, I love seeing that car was just at High Plains running hot laps and now it's a tow rig. <laughs> so uh, Martian wheels for Rivian's coming sooner than maybe you think. Wait. I hope. Um, let's see. And, and obviously Drew's excited. He came over to take a look at the R1S. Let's see. Um, 
Do, do, do. Someone in Fort Collins must have a rigid ultra swing tire hitch mount that could be used for the R1S, tested for clearance and riding dynamics. Also hitch mount accessories if it affects driver plus at all. Uh, so in terms of hitch accessories, if you don't plug it into the seven pin trailer connection, it will not affect your driver plus. There's a special setting you have to put the truck in to turn off the rear parking sensors basically. But any powered device at the moment that uses brake lights will disable all driver assistance and you'll only have manual cruise control. A lot of questions about the car seats getting in and out. This one, a lot of questions Dave asked about off-road versus on-road, differences between R1T and R1S, um, differences in accessibility of racks for storing and loading things, and why you would choose R1T or R1S. Surprisingly, there's a lot of people that don't know which to choose. You either want a truck or an SUV, in my opinion, but we can definitely go into that. Let's see, someone said they're curious about the height of the top of the hood when the front trunk is open, as well as the height of the rear hatch when opened. And if there's any way to set a limiter for the open height, very good question. Sometimes actually, let's just see, the traditional way to set an opening limiter is to go halfway and nope, it's usually to hold that button down and it would set an opening height limit. We'll go into the settings, but I'm not seeing one now. I also wanna mention that the electric motor cutoff weight isn't that much for this rear hatch. So it's not gonna go and crush you into your car, into your R1S, it will just go right back up. So I really like that. Also, another thing is a lot of times with electric rear hatches, you're pushing against the force of an electric motor. Here, definitely the same, but it's not screaming for life like a lot of cars make some terrible noises when you do that. Um, let's see, choo choo choo. Yeah, so some people with lowered garages, I think is her question. Will the hood hit and will this hit? I'm not totally sure, we'll see. So anyway, those are all the questions from Rivian Stories. And again, I skipped some of the duplicates and wanna say a huge thank you to the community over there for supporting us, sharing our videos, having me on their podcast, love the guys. And uh, we're gonna be doing more with them as time goes on. I know Skyler has his R1S, Jimmy and, I don't know if Kyle got his R1S, but I know Jimmy has his R1T. So they're just awesome people. Um, over to the Rivian forums now, which is an awesome online community. We have five pages of responses. So I'm just gonna briefly breeze through all of these, but a huge thank you to these guys for sharing it. Um, let's see, someone wants to do an efficiency comparison of both, looking at the miles per kilowatt hour of R1T versus R1S. Max, you think we should do that? Yeah, why not? And I mean, it's gonna be a big difference, especially with that tonneau cover. Uh, if you didn't have that enabled, I think there'd be a big difference that we can see. Yeah, and I've never actually done the video where we look at tonneau open versus tonneau closed. So we should do that as well. Uh, I was trying to film it a while ago and never actually got to doing it. So let's see, someone wants to see how much battery is used to keeping the cabin warm in the cold when sleeping, uh, which is, it's getting below freezing here at night. We can definitely do that. My prediction is more than the R1T because you have more cabin to warm in this vehicle. So we'll see. Uh, someone wants a live stream of range. We'll certainly do that. Um, they want Alyssa's opinions. Alyssa is going to be shooting a couple videos on her own of this truck, uh, maybe with some of your friends as well, sharing a different perspective than me as a hardcore driving enthusiast, you know, more of the practical side. So we'll cer certainly do that. Someone wants to do R1T versus R1S drag race. Interesting day-to-day uh, -day life comparison. I'll do that when I do an in-depth driving dynamics video on this. I'll talk about parking and driving. Uh, race them, yep. Cargo load challenge, discuss that. We'll certainly do that. Let's see. Uh, someone wants to see a side-by-side -side review of approach, breakover, and departure angles. Stability uh, feeling when on an off camber on trail. Uh, towing of the same rate, uh, weight load and to see how they feel. So yeah, basically a full dynamics on and off-road plus towing comparison of them both. That will be coming absolutely. Uh, and maybe we'll try and get some instrumented data as well for you guys. Uh, let's see, everyone's confused why the R1S has so much less towing, including myself, but it must have to do with some stability of the shorter wheelbase would be the only thing I can think of. I don't know. Let's see, I would love to do some snow and some off-roading onto page two now. Let's see, people are happy we're getting it in the winter time, that's great. Off-roading comparison will certainly do it. Someone just commented to say, hey, that's awesome. <laughs> Hello. How does the height of getting into the back of the R1S compare to that of a Tesla Model Y? 
um, or our Audi for dogs to enter and exit. So for dogs, we'll certainly be doing all of those comparisons, looking at you know probably our Model S versus X versus Ellie this. Will be the ultimate tester. Ellie will be our golden retriever. Does not jump into things. So Blue Ellie. Will enjoy this being lifted and jumping up and down. Yeah, Blue Blue will love it. Yep. Let's see. Uh, people want to know about the compact spare tire. Um, so maybe we'll do a whole video on how to put that on in comparison to the Rivian R1T spare tire, talking about the jack puck points and things like that. That would be a good idea. Okay, a lot of different suspension feeling. I have not driven it yet, so very interesting. Rearward vi visibility, certainly can touch on it. Um, someone wants to know about HVAC, comfort and noise. One thing I'll tell you just because I've I said I haven't driven it. I moved it from there to here. I heard the rear air compressor, or just the air compressor for the suspension in general, so much more than the R1T, because you're kind of in the same space as the compressor. So when I went to highest suspension to shoot this video, it just went and it just made the whole cabin so loud. A lot of off-road uh, testing, crash test someone wants to see. Let's hope that doesn't happen. Fingers crossed. Should be pretty safe though. Let's see. Not many in Colorado right now. Yep. Uh, someone has an R1S in Colorado in Broomfield, and he took his to the uh, Rivian Stories meetup this past weekend. He felt that his R1S was more nimble than an R1T out on the trail. Let's see. A lot of off-road questions. So interesting. I've noticed a ton of... Um, ton of people off-roading their Rivians, which is great to see. I really love it. And perhaps on our Out of Spec Overlanding channel, subscribe to that if you're interested to off-road. We should do a whole thing on how to drive so you're not tearing up the road you're on. Uh, tread lightly is the motto. So we'll, we'll dig into that a little bit more. A lot of HVAC performance in second and third row. Absolutely. Um, I don't know if this vehicle has underbody protection or not. I don't have the full spec for it. It's being emailed to me, so I'll wait for that before I know, but that'll be interesting. I know my personal truck does not have underbody protection, and I've laid this thing on some sharp stuff, and it hasn't been an issue yet, so hasn't exploded up to this point. Uh, someone wants us to tow charge one of these. You know what that is, Max? Yeah, using the regen basically to charge it. Uh, let's say you had no access to any kind of infrastructure. That is something you could do. Yeah, so we should tow the R1S with our R1T and see the efficiency of power conversion. Years ago, when we were earlier, early on starting, we did a video on this. We towed our smart car with mm -hmm. a Tesla Model X and looked at the efficiency of charging. And that was a pretty fun video, actually. Um, let's see. So we just did all of the different drive configurations of tailgate up or down. Uh, rear hitch, how rescinded is it? I'll talk about that in the towing reviews. Um, let's take a look. Wow, look at this dude. He wrote out literally a entire big questionnaire. So I think this is wonderful. We're going to use this as a basis for our reviews. So a huge thank you to this guy for being detailed in his questions. And um, yeah, we're going to go through and everything he brings up, we will be talking about in our videos. But it just goes on and on and on. I, I think he wrote a whole novel here. <laughs> with questions. So a huge, uh, yeah, thank you. We're definitely going to talk about that. Someone wants to know if there's, he asked if there's a 12 volt in the front trunk. There is on my truck, I believe, but not on new production uh, trucks. So someone wants to know if they left it for R1S. Oh, you hit the key and I hit the button. Okay. Hit the key. There we go. Um... Okay. Nope. Oh, actually, I'm sorry. Yep. Right there. I forgot where it was for a second. Interesting. So you got your washer fluid. So this one does. Should I at least share the VIN so we know the production line? This is number 140. <laughs> so she's an early one. I'm actually curious how many miles are on it for all of the testing since we're up here. Ah, I'm going to go into truck, truck. 3,016 miles, launch edition, uh, Rivian Blue, Black Mountain, and it has the 20 inch all terrain dark wheels, and the underbody has the off road underbody, so it does have the skid plate. That's how we checked. Great. Turning radius test, absolutely, all of that good stuff. Um, people want to see R1S in other colors. Not sure we can do much about that. 
color. There's a different color. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Alyssa. <laughs> That's our comprehensive review. <laughs> there it is. Great. So we got it. Uh, will it blend? <laughs> Uh, interior dimensions, certainly we can do that. Third row, third row, third row, zero to 60 in reverse. This guy knows our videos. That's my kind of testing right there. I think it only does 15 in reverse. It's like a lame speed, if I remember correctly. The leaf goes max speed backwards, pretty much. It does like 35 or 40. It's awesome. Um, yeah, okay, good stuff here. It seems to be just a repeat of all of the same things, but I promise you I'll read through. I think we got the most stuff. Um, we want to find the tallest guy we can. Someone knows someone who's seven foot five. If they're in Colorado, send them over because we'd love we to. Go to we go to the basketball team. Yeah, uh, that would be really cool. Let's see, driving dynamics, visibility. Certainly, we'll talk about all of that when we do the driving review. I think we're good. Yeah, I think it's just the same questions over and over. I'm just getting to the last page. Just bear with me. We're this far into the video. We can get there. How about maxing out the onboard power outlets? That would be an interesting one. Let's see. If it's anything like R1T, I think there should be like a 1500 watt cutoff for the whole, uh, all the power outlets. Yeah, but uh, Brandon, one of our friends, did a thing where the more amperage he drew, uh, it had voltage sag in his truck. Mm. And so it's just like the inverter couldn't keep up. So it depends on the devices you actually plug in, how many amps they're drawing. Yeah, so we can do that testing. We're not sure if it was his truck specifically or ours, but there you go. That's the questions from Rivian Stories and RivianForums.com, RivianForum.com, or is it forums? Either way, Google it, you'll find it. Uh, huge thanks to the community for watching our videos, for subscribing, for making it, things like this possible where we can review these new electric vehicles. It's been one hell of a month. We have. Model S Plaid, we had Lucid Air, <laughs> now we have Rivian R1S. Just crazy fun, uh, living the dream, of course. The, the only question is who's driving the R1S back to Fort Collins? Looks like Alyssa. <laughs> All right, well, uh, we got videos to film. This one's going up right away in real time, and we'll see you on another episode soon. Thanks for watching.